Brian Whitman podcast show here at brianwhitman.com. Thank you for finding us on our website at brianwhitman.com where you get a brand new show every Monday through Friday. And of course it is Monday. We'll be here all week. And I hope you enjoyed Saturday's boner bonus podcast show with John of the John and Jeff show. And people emailed me at emailwhitman at gmail.com. And they said, why'd you do a Saturday show? Just, just for fun. And I wrote back because we love you and we love our hundreds of subscribers. And if you are a subscriber, it's only five bucks a month. You know that 25 cents a day, the cost of a cup of Starbucks, Tell your friends to subscribe with the demise of 97.1 FM talk. The talk radio that you like to listen to is still available. I'm here. Tim Conway Jr. will come on our show. Frank Kramer here will come on our show. That type of talk radio, whether you get it on the radio, whether you get it on satellite radio, whether you get it on the Internet in a podcast, that you're listening to on your computer or download on your iPod or whatever, that talk radio is still here, and you get it every day, Monday through Friday, sometimes with the Boner Bonus Saturday show at brianwhitman.com. It's the Brian Whitman Podcast Show, and thank you for joining me. And let me welcome uh, our first guest, um, a uh, former Conway and Whitman producer, and then when Whitman got the get on out, she was the Tim Conway Jr. show producer, and by the way, never, ever called me after being fired, which I thank her for. Uh, the lovely, the talented, and what did I say in the text message? F- f- uh, future radio star. See, that's what you remembered. Yeah. You can speak up a little bit. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I wasn't sure if it was really ready for me to start or... No. Not. If I was just feeding you the line. No, future, okay. future radio star. Thank you very much. Gina Grad is with us. Yay. The lovely <laughs> Gina Grad. We love her, and we know those listening, those of our subscribers yeah. who are 97.1, who are in Southern California, uh, they know Gina Grad. But what I found out is we had so many listeners, Conway and Whitman, and then, of course, Conway on his own. We had so many listeners that I get emails from people in Toronto, the Caribbean, um, the middle of the country. I talked to... Um, I didn't talk to, I emailed somebody from Florida, listening in Florida. They love you in Minnesota, too. Am I big in Minnesota? Yes, huge. Who's bigger in Minnesota, me or Al Franken, who ran for the U.S. Senate? Um, You. Don't think so. No. Me or Jesse Ventura? You. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely me. Are you kidding? I would agree with that. I would agree with that. All right. Last night, the Oscars happened. Um, I don't watch the Oscars. Oh, really? Not an awards guy? I'm not really. I kind of burned out on that a number of years ago. The only thing I like is, and if I knew when they do it, I would tune in just to watch it. And the truth is I could have T-voted it and just watch that part. I love the in memoriam when they play clips and put the names up. Those past. I don't even think they put the names up. They just show them. They they also put the names up because you wouldn't know who these random cinematographers and sort of sound mixers are yeah that's true yeah and they have the sweet music yes and that sometimes makes me cry well who, who was one of the bigger names in that oh, uh, paul newman oh my gosh that's yeah, right van yeah. johnson and of course um a uh, heath ledger he wasn't in it we all talked about that i think they did something for him last year when did he die it, was it late 07? It would, no, it was early 08. But they, but they included him in that year's... Because the Oscars don't happen in February, and if he died in January or early February... You know what? I saw it last year, yeah. and I think he, Heath Ledger was in last year. Yeah, year's. we talked about that. Did, we didn't know why. Gina Grad, did you weep? No. You did not weep? No, I couldn't weep because Queen Latifah was singing along. Well, that'd make me weep. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't It wasn't as sweet and nostalgic as it could have been because she was stuffed into a very um, form-fitted, um, reflective fabric. Yeah, she's stuffed, by the way, into anything she wears. <laughs> she doesn't wear anything without being literally stuffed into it. And I think she was literally sewn into this garment. Um, the big uh, fashion color this year was royal and or navy blue. Not a great color for a gown. Yeah. For anybody. Uh-huh. So it just, it really left something to be desired. The in memoriam could have had a much bigger impact. I don't remember someone live on stage singing music 
while they rolled in memoriam, I thought they just played exactly music without vocals. Right. They always do. You're saying last night they changed that. They changed a lot of things in hopes of getting bigger ratings. But, but they changed that? Yes. That was a mistake. Yeah. Me- memo to the producer of the Academy Awards, yeah. who, of course, wants to know what Brian Whitman of the Brian Whitman of Podcast course. Show thinks at brianwhitman.com. I wouldn't do that. Best picture, Slumdog. Slumdog Millionaire. And I talked to Sam Phillips. Sure. And she said to me, the right mo- everyone who won was the person who was supposed to win. She was huh. she was on uh, if you know what I mean, Cloud Nine. No, <laughs> she was on Cloud Four Twenty. Exactly. And uh, she said, "Slumdog was th- was that a worthy recipient?" It was unbelievable. I was very lucky because I saw Slumdog Millionaire when I didn't know what it was. I literally went to the movie theater and by myself. And sixty seconds into the movie, I'm thinking, "Wait, wait, wait." This is a movie about who wants to be a millionaire. That's a game show. Yes, it is. Yeah, you got it. You want to be a millionaire? Let's play Slumdog Millionaire. (laughs) Can you do that with an Indian accent? No, I can't. And by the way, I never go to movies alone. I'm surprised you can do that. Oh, it's my favorite activity. I hate going to movies with other people. Oh. I love going to movies by myself. So you think Slumdog Millionaire deserved to be best picture? Absolutely. I haven't seen Frost Nixon, but I, I, I'm sure it was amazing. Yeah, I want to see that. And uh, Sean Penn won. Milk. And according to Sam Phillips, sure, he deserved to win. I'm, I just, I'm doing Marge Simpson. <laughs> that's that, not Sam. That's, no, my new Sam. Sure. Oh, you Slumdog totally deserved to win, you guys. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's not a bad Sammy. That's a character of Sam. But just as I make John of the John and Jeff show Johnny Carson, I'm now going to make Sam Phillips Marge Simpson. Oh. I swear everyone who won deserved to absolutely win. Wow. It was unbelievable. Wow. I loved it. I had no idea you could do Julie Kavner. It was really impressive. Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm very impressed. I loved Milk. All right. But he did. Sean Penn was very Sean Penn and said, first of all, he he knows how hard it, he makes it for people to appreciate him. So thank you very much. Meaning I'm an a-hole yes. and you all know it. Yes. And he said, and anyone who voted for me was a commie, pinko, homo loving, blah, blah, blah. Oh, he didn't need to do that. He said it twice. Said it twice yeah. as if you didn't hear it the first time. Yeah. Oh, you're, a, you're a pinko, commie, homo loving son of a gun. Twice. He didn't say son of a bitch. No, he said, son of a gun. Son of a gun. Yeah. Is this 1960? <laughs> you son of a gun. <laughs> All right. Also, she brought with her Gina Grad. We have two guests. Yes. And uh, one only has a few minutes to spend with us. But uh, another former KLSX 97.1 FM, uh, now Amp Radio. Uh, Randy Wang, have you heard Amp Radio? What do you think? It's lame. No, you think it's lame because you miss 97.1. And no, I, it's lame because I don't like that kind of music. I mean, I don't need to hear Kanye West over and over and over again. If someone likes Kiss FM in Los Angeles, would they like Amp Radio? Probably. Okay. Gina, your opinion? If someone likes Ryan Seacrest, although Amp FM doesn't have a mo- Amp Radio doesn't have a morning show. It doesn't right. have any personality on it. <laughs> that, I, that's actually true. Um if someone likes, in your opinion, Kiss FM, or for people listening in New York, our subscribers, Z100, would they like Amp Radio if they like Kiss FM? Absolutely. And they'll like it apparently more for this month when it's uh, commercial free. 10,000 songs in a row, in a row, in a row, in a row. <laughs> and they started repeating themselves after the second hour. Amp FM. No, wow. amp, amp Radio. Are you doing the voices for that? That was my audition. We're g- can you edit that and send it over to them? Sure thing. I, I know CBS <clears throat> loves you, Brian. <laughs> By the way, uh, a-hole, <laughs> the president and general manager of CBS, who I won't name, who we all know, Jesus Christ, do you know how many times he's told me, straight-faced, I love you? And do you know what? Not in my company, he told a friend of mine, straight-faced, not Brian's great on the air, oh, we loved Brian, and he was great. Quote, I love Brian Whitman, and that meant a lot to me, and hopefully he'll hire me. Absolutely. Um, that would be nice if that happened. Now, what got me into uh, what got me into that? This is always uh, when I lose my train of thought. Not again. <laughs> no, we got into the— You uh, would like Randy to record your Amp FM audition. Thanks. Amp Radio. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to do it as Ernie Anderson. Okay. Because I am nostalgic for the 80s. <clears throat> Coming down the line in three, two, one— Live, <clears throat> live, <clears throat> live, 
from high atop Mount Wilson. This is Amp Radio. Ooh. Did that give you the chills? A little bit. Down there. No. Live from high atop... <clears throat> now. Live from high atop Mount Wilson. This is Amp Radio. Amp Radio. Lock it in and rip the knob off. <laughs> Will you send that to them, please? Sure thing. Not that dials, not that radio dials have knobs anymore, but... Uh. Why is that the best thing ever? Turn it up and rip the knob off. Lock, lock it yeah. in. <laughs> Amp Radio. Amp Radio. Lock it in and rip the knob off. <laughs> All right, so send that over to them, will you? Yeah, I'll send it over. And tell them I'll negotiate a monthly retainer fee, and that'd be great. Here's the guest who doesn't have a lot of time to uh, stay, but she came with Gina Grad, and uh, I'm very happy to welcome another uh, 97.1 former personality, and now she's on, I, I think she's on another station now. <clears throat> Is she on KFWB? I don't know. Give it up for the great psychic uh, who appeared many times with uh, Conway and Steckler, Conway and Whitman, Conway by himself, Linda Salvin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I see you are into butterflies. You've always been into butterflies. You're uh, wearing a beautiful necklace with a, you. with a big butterfly. Very observant, Brian. Uh, I believe that butterflies are a wink from God, and therefore I always try to have one on me, on my person somewhere. Somewhere. Even if, Why don't you just get a tattoo of a butterfly? What I, makes you think I don't have one? Where is it? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see that. I bet you would, Brian. I bet you would. Linda, would you bang me? Yes, I would. Oh, wow. Wow. I don't think I've ever gotten confirmation that quickly. Yes. Now, let's do my chart real quickly. Since you're, Are you an astrologer, a psychic, no, or, a, or, or, or a fraud? I well, am, of those three, uh, what are you? I'm a psychic medium healer. Oh, you're also a healer? Yes. Well, what, for people with AIDS and cancer and SARS and um, the flesh-eating virus, you're a healer? Spiritual healing. Spiritual healing. Oh, spiritual. That's different. Yeah. Aren't you also a doctor of metaphysiology? Uh, yes, thank you, Randy. I am. I am a, a doctor. Of metaphysiology. Yes, I have my PhD. A couple of more consonants and vowels you skipped in there. Vowels yes. primarily that Randy... Uh, I was not born with these gifts either. These were given to me after a series of horrendous uh, accidents. Well, you were in that Trans Am. Weren't you in the Trans Am? I was in the Trans Am. I fell out of a plane. I had an out-of-body experience. I just wish they put me back in the right body. <laughs> Linda, I have an idea for you. Yes. With all you've been through, because the Trans Am, you told Conway and me one night, went like under a truck, right? Yes, it and, did. And uh, the roof came off. Yes, and ripped you, right off. Right. And you, Linda Salvin, seriously almost lost your life to decapitation. Yes. And then you fell out of an airplane that, as I recall, broke into two pieces. In half. Mid-air. In half. Uh -huh. Mid-air. And you survived. I did. Why have you not auditioned to be a contestant on Survivor? You are a survivor, Linda. Um, because I don't think it's really in my life's path to balance an egg on a spoon for a half of a pound of rice. Um, I don't really think that I'm going the game show direction right now. All right. But uh, would, would they allow you to bring your butterfly paraphernalia to the island of... Uh, uh of uh, F.U.? Bora, Bora. Yeah, uh -oh. I, I hope so. Maybe it's something I could um, maybe perhaps melt down and trade with the locals, the natives, if you will. If you were a contestant on Survivor and the producer said, Linda, you can win a million dollars or two million, whatever it's up to now, but you can't bring any butterfly crap, would you go yes or no? No, absolutely not. All right, let's do my chart. What do you see for me? I don't need, well, I, no, I don't think I need spiritual. Do you think I need spiritual healing? Oh, Brian, you have no idea. Okay. All right. So give me give me a line or two on that. Spiritual healing. What? Well, Brian, I still see you. Uh, I see you making a lot of effort, um, really working on yourself. I think you have a long way to go. Um, oh, I don't think you're a lost cause, Brian. I just think that you have a lot of uh, healing, very deep spiritual healing to do with yourself. As you know, we've uh, we've uh, spoken with your father. Yes. Well, you channeled my father. I did, in but, fact. Uh, but as I said to you uh, Thursday night on the final Conway show, forget my father. Oh. What about my effing career, Linda Salvin? Uh, well, when, when will more money start coming mm -hmm. in? The podcast is great. The Brian Whitman podcast show at brianwhitman.com. Tell your friends it's five bucks for an entire month of shows. And thanks to the hundreds of people who have already subscribed in less than a week that we've been podcasting online. Uh, tell me about money and jobs and, uh, and 
and try to nail it, Linda. Okay, Brian. Well, I think that we're really going in the right direction here. And I think that the, your uh, monetary uh, financial success is really just right around the corner. Um, I think at the end of uh, March, maybe beginning of April, I see you doing a lot more voiceover, uh, so, perhaps with animation. Anima- perhaps animation. With, yes, maybe something with Disney. I think they're big fans of you. You do? I do. I think that I see you in one of their next upcoming projects, perhaps a Wall-E sequel or maybe an Ice Age. Well, at one point I was a millionaire. If I had sold my house at the right time, which was about two and a half years ago, I, did, I ran the numbers, I would have been a millionaire. Oh. I didn't sell my house because I loved it. And I didn't take uh, big jobs because I love L.A. and I enjoyed uh, working with Conway. Um, I'm not anymore. But is the gravy train rolling back? I mean, I'm only 36 and... Are the best years still to come, Linda? I think they are, Brian. I think they are. I think you just need to commit to a life of, you know, healthy attitude and uh, positive change, and the world will be your oyster, Brian. Linda Salvin, Thank ladies. You. You're great. And I'm pe- really tight on time. No, that's fine. I know you have a reading or some sort of meeting or something going on. Thank you, Linda. Thank you very much. And uh, you know Gina, of course, don't you? Hi, Linda. All okay, right. bye. All right, bye bye. Linda Salvin, she is really She's terrific. She's great, right? She's very sweet woman. And did did you guys carpool or she drove? No, behind? well, she just dropped me off. I'm gonna have somebody get me. Maybe Randy could take me home. Okay, or I could I could take you for a ride. Really? Yeah. Oh. Um, last week on the Brian Whitman podcast show, Randy Wang uh, was uh, had a thought, or uh, like a spark of a thought, and huh. he said, "You know, Brian, um, I have a I have a." Hinkling that so and so, and I said, Whoa, whoa, whoa buddy, Hin- <laughs> I said, Hinkling is not a word. I swear I thought it was a word. I know, I've, of, I've, of course, you thought it was a word, you used it as a word. I've heard of inkling. Of, well, that's and that's what I said to him. I said, A spark of a thought, right? That's an inkling, right? I said, If you can produce a dictionary with the word Hinkling in it, because <laughs> John Hinkley shot Ronald Reagan, right? Um, Hinkley's a great brand of water. That's also true. Yep. Inkling is a thought or the beginning of a thought or a hunch. Or really. suspicion, yeah. Yes. I have an inkling this would have happened. Great synonyms, Gina Grab. Thank you. So I said, bring in a dictionary. If you can show me a dictionary, a real dictionary, and I'm talking Merriam-Webster's right. or who's the other big uh, dictionary people? Merriam-Webster and um, Webster's. You think uh, Webster's has competition? I think it's just Webster's owns that uh, market. Really? Get me a dictionary with the word hinkling in it, and I'll give you a hundred bucks. You're so unmotivated that you didn't even get a dictionary to. You didn't buy a dictionary for five dollars, or even a little pocket dictionary to try to get a hundred bucks out of me. Why not, dude? Because I googled the word and it doesn't exist. I got an email at emailwhitman at gmail dot com for all our subscribers. And some chick, and I don't have the email in front of me. I do have other emails I want to get to. She says, Hinkling is actually a word. Really? And I thought, really? Unbelievable. Who is this bitch? <laughs> I believe it did come from a uh, Brian Whitman podcast listener who happens to be a, a female. Right. And um, uh, she, like, used it in context, used it in a sentence. How did she use it? And I forget. And she dissected the sentence. I think she's an English teacher. Did she give you the Latin root? No, but she uh, did identify it as noun, verb, or adjective. Huh. Yeah. And, I, and she broke it down into syllables. It's a monosyllabic. Oh. No, uh, a uh, polysyllabic Thank word. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're still waiting for Randy Wang's $100 uh, if he can get a dictionary. But the clock is ticking on that. Um, before we get to the emails, I got to pay off a little promise that I made to the audience when we were talking about top 40 teenage radio disc jockeys. And I was one of them. If you go to brianwhitman.com, if you're a paid subscriber and you obviously are, if you're hearing the podcast, uh, even if you're not, one of the free samples is a little audio clip. I think it's about a minute, right? Yeah, a couple of air checks of you on Eagle 106 and Y100 talking up songs. Yeah, air check is a radio term for tape of a show. Right. Uh, the tape of your show is called an air a check. A little sample. A little sample. And um, so I was a teenage DJ, and you'd get calls because, um, you know, I wasn't hideous. I was thin. I was not fat. I had a full head of hair. Really? 
well, what do you think? I was 17 and looked like this. I didn't know if this was like a Benjamin Button thing. No, I'm not Benjamin Button. Okay. But, but thanks. I just have the wheelchair here in case I have another seizure. Right. Yeah. All right. So, um, and uh, by the way, if that happens, uh, Randy will load me into the wheelchair <laughs> and you'll call 911. Okay. All right. So we have the plan. So I got to load you in the wheelchair. If I have a seizure or a heart attack. Oh, God. Who loads me into the wheelchair? Uh, Randy Wang. Who calls 911? Gina Grad. Thank nope. you. Brian, you're kind of heavy. I don't know if I could put you in the wheelchair. Oh. I can't lift 210 pounds. Gina, I have a question. Yeah. Um, am I living on the planet Earth, or did <laughs> Randy Wang just tell me I'm kind of heavy? Randy, you easily have 60 pounds on me. <laughs> well, I'm not saying that you could lift me in a wheelchair. I'm just saying I could probably not lift you in a wheelchair. Basically, he's it- double-pronged insulting himself because not only um, he's saying you're a, heavy, a heavier gentleman, he doesn't have but, um, a mu- but you, what, what is the first thing you said to me? When I you- said you lost a lot of weight, Brian. Thank you. But he doesn't have apparently the muscle tone right. to help you into a wheelchair. So he's really talking more about himself than you, about you. You embarrassed yourself twice in one sentence. Way to go. Thanks a lot, Brian. All right. Um, now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Eagle 106. I'm doing the Saturday night uh, hot mix. Oh. And I'm spinning it. It's all on CD. And there's little gaps like they play a uh, rump shaker oh. or like crisscross. And then they're on the uh, music log. There'd be like 20 seconds for me to talk. And I'd say, you know, Brian Whitman, Saturday night hot mix is Eagle 106. And that's crisscross coming up. We got more from Mariah Carey. And rump shaker now on Eagle 106. Nuts all morning, hits all day. Boom, bam, boom, ba bam, boom, ba boom, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. If you don't see that guy and you hear him on the radio and you're young and you're a chick and you're horny, you think that guy might be hot. I'm going to call him on the request line. Right. So this girl named, quote, Jaguar, like the car, or as the great radio talk show host from KABC fame, Michael Jackson, used to say, Jaguar. Oh, God. Um, her name was Jaguar. <laughs> so I did a little chit-chat with her, and she said, well, why don't you drive by my house after the show? And I was 18, maybe 19. And I said, Jaguar. <laughs> this was before MapQuest. I said, what is your address? What's your ad-? I turned into Conway. I said, baby, what's your address, baby? She gives me her address. She says, I'll be standing outside the car, outside the car, outside, like, by my car, outside, outside the house. Outside the Jaguar. That's a, no, yeah, no, she, oh, no, she didn't no. have a, okay. she did not have a Jaguar. <laughs> she was lucky if she had a Le Car. You remember those? No. Oh, you're too young. No. All right, I'm 36, no. and I age myself. That's the car with the fabric sunroof. The uh, fabric sunroof? Really? Yeah. All right, don't ruin the story, dude. Thanks a lot. So I'm hot for her, and I'm really hot for really anything. So I drive over there. It's not that far. I pull up. In my Honda Prelude, oh. which I um, actually at later at a later date it stalled on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. It was picked up on a flatbed. It was at the service station. Uh, the guy hooking it up to the flatbed, uh, not, not so much, not too bright. Yeah. Actually, watched my first car roll <gasps> off the back of a flatbed and crash to the cement. Uh, a ground. Oh God! Last words I said before the uh, car fell off the flatbed. Swear to God, these are the words. I'll never forget them. To the technician, I said, "Quote, dude, what's with the car?" Back, and that was a six thousand dollar repair. But that's why I have insurance. So I drove my Prelude to Jaguar's home. <laughs> I wanted to see what does Jaguar really have in mind tonight. So she's standing outside, and I stop my car because I'm a nice guy. I shouldn't have stopped my car because it looked like Nell Carter. Oh. It looked like the white Nell Carter was standing oh. outside. No, better who's a who? Not Rose, not Roseanne, and not Rosie O'Donnell. Huh. Uh, Maybe uh, hmm. the the chick who plays the housekeeper on Two and a Half Men. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It looked like that. Okay. And I believe it was raining. Mm. It was like... Extra <laughs> drama, yeah. And I said, hi, I'm Brian. Are you... Jaguar? <laughs> and she said, yeah. I said, well, it's nice to meet you. And at this point, I'm totally uncomfortable, but I can't just drive away. I said, get in the car. We'll um, go get a... We'll go to the deli. Delis are big on the East Coast. Yeah. And we'll get like a soda or something. She's like, okay. 
So we get in the car, and I'm talking to her, and um, she says, why don't you pull over for a second so we can have our sodas? And uh, I do. Wait, you didn't have the soda at the deli? No, you you don't sit down in delis. It's not a diner. It's a deli. You Uh go and you buy like a sandwich from the deli, a meat uh, sandwich. There's not like a... You know what cold cuts are? I do, Brian. Okay. Um, No no tables. And it was... Sometimes they have those bars along the window. Yeah, baby, baby. The Saturday night hot mix ended at midnight. (laughs) So there weren't a lot of options for food or drink. So I got... Thank you all. Uh, it couldn't have been a diet drink. It had to be like a regular Coke or... And egg cream. Yeah, I, I got her a malt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she uh, was in the car sitting next to me, and I'm just like sitting next to her, and we're like talking. And all of a sudden, she kisses me, oh. and she's so fat. She's like really fat, and fat's okay. It Fat can feel pretty good, right? Guys like fat. I didn't get that far. Fat, no. But no, fat can be cool, but... But fugly, I mean, Jaguar. <laughs> when you think of the car, when you think of the car Jaguar, you think sleek, dynamic, right. charismatic. Clean lines. Clean lines, gorgeous, beautiful. Right. You don't think fugly and <laughs> morbidly obese. No. Crane lifted, no. The Jaguar that I leased that night oh. was uh, not off the showroom floor. Had a, had a couple miles on it. Starts k- kind of kissing on my ear. You do that, and uh, I don't care who you are. If you're what di- if Randy did it? No, it would not work. If you did I it, I tried that once. No. No. Yeah. So she does it, and uh, then uh, right there, right there in the uh, eighty nine Honda Prelude, you bought a Jaguar. You uh, you rolled a Jaguar home. No, let me say this, uh, Jaguar. Apparently. Uh, I can't say this. Please can, do. Can I? Please do. What about you my re- what about re- my reputation as a broadcaster? I think it's already been ruined. J- <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jaguar got uh, more than the malt. Oh. That night. Wow. Yeah. Fill up the tank. A uh, no comment. Oh. So. Uh, I don't wow, think, Brian. I, I never did that again until KLSX. What? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's another topic for another show. Oh, no. Oh, yes, it is, because we have more things to do here. I, I've got to know. No, you'll know about me, right. me and any KLSX female connections uh, when the time comes. Oh. But I do have, uh, I have a game. I want you and Randy to play a game. You want to play the game and then do the emails? Yeah, let's play a game. Yeah, let's play a game. Miss games. Okay, let's play a game. <laughs> I'm hey. Randy Ray. Oh, I what did Rick D's chummy? Oh, hey, chummy. Hey. <laughs> Rick the D's, we're going to play a game. My name's Jimmy. Oh, chummy. Oh, chummy, you're number I'm one. chummy. <laughs> oh, that is great, chummy. Oh, God. That was a Halloween Conway and Whitman bit. Did chummy end up getting a t- dinner for two at Tony Roma's? He got dinner for four at Tony Roma's, oh. Snooky's Cookies, plus balloons. Oh. And the uh, candy apples. Yes. And the king size chocolate bars. Yes. That's what he got. Not the fun size, which is a total oxymoron, because they're about three inches. They're wide. no. They're no. They're zero fun. They're such disappointment. They're zero fun. Yeah. Unless you eat three of them at a time. No. Oh. Then they're pretty. Fun. Yeah. I'm gonna clog your entire uh, esophagus and right. uh, you know your larynx and hope to choke to death on on chocolate. Which he's actually a competitive eater when it comes to chocolate. <laughs> He could enter in, in major competition. Yeah. What about hot dog eating? I could eat a bunch of hot dogs, but what she's referencing what? is we were at the Grammys. I know. You were at the Grammys, and you ate the chocolate himself. bars. I tried to eat three chocolate bars in under a minute, and I totally didn't do it. And, and I ended up, There was some chocolate rain. Let's I ended up spitting chocolate all over the table. But in the history of 97.1, with all due respect to Randy Wang, the king of eating for money. Yeah. Malibu Dan. Oh, I thought you said no, uh, mistake ski. Yeah, Jerry Wachowski. We put a lot of food into cat Wachowski. Cat food, Brian. Oh, that's right. He ate cat food. I yeah. mean, you got to yeah. give him something. Yeah. yeah, no, he wins. Cat food. And then he sang that uh, stupid song on stage at the Commerce Casino. What the cha cha. The cha cha. Yeah. Cha cha, real smooth. <laughs> yeah. Break cha- it down now. Break it down now. Cha cha, real smooth. <laughs> I forgot about that. Thank you, are. All right, so I have two games for you guys to play. 
Oh, I'm so excited. We can play uh, Randy Wang, Randy F. and Wang, man, on the Brian Whitman podcast show at brianwhitman.com. It's only five bucks a month. Tell your friends. Get on a message board. Mm. Go on like the Adam Carolla message board. Or Radio Info. Yeah, which I have an issue with that board. Some douche. Uh, accused me of drinking. He, he wrote, uh, Whitman had, when, talking about me and Lycus, they had both been drinking all night. Whitman had been there all night and had been drinking. What did I drink that night? Do you remember what I drank the night of the Conway's last Probably show? Probably a Diet Coke. A regular Coke. Oh, okay. And, right. that's, and I didn't even finish it in the three hours. Why do you for even the, for read the, that crap? Don't obsess with what message board is right. If you do that, you're going to go insane. That's why I don't read message boards. Because yeah. what I say is you eliminate all the marriage proposals and death threats. And you can look at everything else in the middle. Well, but don't I'll, get hung up on either one of well, those. Well, I only get one, on, one of those two. Oh. And I'm marriage sure, proposals. Yeah, right. Sure. All right. So here's what we have. We have two games for you to choose from. Donna Reed's on this one. Nice reference. How old are you? Wow. Uh, by the way, didn't you attack me earlier for an old reference? Oh, yeah. No, oh, no. Ryan. Oh, sorry. How dare you? All right. So we have a game, a great game, uh, produced by the A&E channel uh, based on their successful show biography. It's called Who Am I? And I would be the host. Jenny would be the contestant. Randy would be uh, her uh, opponent. opponent. Thank you. Uh-huh. And... I'll give you an example. This is going to be hard. Yeah, I'm not that smart, Brian. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. I played this game not long ago. Oh, 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 oh. What? Uh-oh. Oh, this is different. <laughs> wait a minute. We might have to play Millionaire. Okay. Wait, yeah, let's play Millionaire. Let's yeah, this is different. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to sneeze real fast. <laughs> All right, we're cutting here. God bless you. No, Thank we're not you. cutting here. All right, then we won't Just because I'm here. allergic to radio? Because she sneezes? Well, because we're setting up a game You sounded board. so much like Edna just there. And, and do some Aunt Edna for us, please. Who, Gina? Because or, or, she uh, sneezes. Because she sneezes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Randy, it's not a competition. <laughs> God. I, just, he, uh, forget it. You're doing, I'm, you, forget it. I'm just going to sit here and not talk. Talk. You're you're a contestant on Millionaire. <laughs> Brian, remember what you used to say? Gina's doing porn. I don't. Did I used to do that? Yeah. There's a lot I don't remember. Oh, you say that a lot. Gina's doing porn. Yeah. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. So I reach for my trusty Parliament. <laughs> Once or twice it was Parliament, yeah. right? And then other times. Oh yeah, Benson and Hedges. Lark. And larks. I reach for my lucky larks. Yep. And after we ran an Edna bit in the news, I would go sometimes on a minute-long run. Rant. And <laughs> something, something... As Edna. Yeah, and you'd say I'd come home or I'd go to Chicago for, you know, Rosh Hashanah or something. And then out of nowhere, Edna would say, What? Gina's doing porn? <laughs> oh, my God, you're turning bright red. <laughs> I'm laughing. Oh, that's funny. I was funny. You were hysterical. Oh, uh, but what's happened? You're still very funny. Thank you. Yeah. Go- God bless you. Oh. John Gula. All right. <laughs> so I want to play millionaire. Should I ask the questions as Regis? But yeah, of course. We don't course. have the sound effects. Or Indian Regis. All right. How do we want to see? I thought a way of doing this. There's a couple of ways we can do this game. Because there's $100, $200, $300, 500 1000 right. 2 4 8 16 32 64 Whoa. 125 to 50 500 a million. I think the Wow. Who that kno- was amazing. Who knows the game shows? You. I think that's the level of questions. We could combine it with like name that tune where one of you could say, and I'll pick the person to start. If I had a coin, if I had any money, I'd flip a coin. I'm the guest. You're right. So you'll start. Thank you. And you would say to Randy, Randy, I can answer a, I'm just pulling this out of my A. Randy, I can answer a $300 question. And Randy could say, oh, Gina, I can answer a $500 question. And you could say, Answer that question. It's like name that tune where you go back and forth. Please tell me you're familiar with name that I, tune. Uh, of course I am, Brian, but that seems awfully complicated. No, Can't we just, no, can't we just buzz in? No. How many levels of questions are there? Because we, we I actually... just read them off at no, a but, dynamic know, speed that, that impressed <laughs> Gina to the point where she almost uh, yes. made love to me. We yes. could almost play 21 and each one gets a number of value. It's way too complicated. You, yeah, you, that's complicated. Let's do it your way, Brian. No, I, no, because then you're challenging each other based on your perception of each other's in- intelligence. Which neither one are very high. 
the I perception per- or in reality. Well, I perceive you as both very intelligent. Oh, thank you very much. So I ask you, and the first person to get a question wrong loses, and how about we do best of five? Are you going to keep score? Yeah, I'm the scorekeeper. Okay, cool. All right, best of five. Okay. Okay. You don't have to write down best of five. We'll remember. I need to remember. Okay. So we start with Gina. You start the bidding. Hundred dollar, two, three hundred, five hundred dollar question. I think I could answer a three hundred dollar question. All right, a three hundred dollar question. Is Regis around? Should I go get him? There he is. Yeah, you the got Regis it. Here I am. You know it. Woo! Woo! Pleasure to be here, Regis. Really excited. All right, here we go. Which of these islands lends its name to a style of knee length shorts? Is it Nantucket, Puerto Rico, Bermuda, or Jamaica? Do I talk it through? You want to talk it through? Well, sure. Let's see. Um, I have culottes, but that wasn't uh, listed. Um, let's see, I've been to Jamaica. I had a great time. Do you but still I don't w- remember? Uh, do you still wear the capris? I love capris. Yes, thank you, Regis. Also called cigarette pants. Yes. <laughs> Um, All right, now we have an island here, and um, uh, the island has the same name. Oh, God, she's a lifeline. As um, a pair of knee length shorts. There are no lifelines, Regis. Oh. There are no lifelines. Okay. Um, uh, there is a 50 50 if you want it. Thank Th- you very much. That's the only one you get. Okay. Um, is it Nantucket? Uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, well, have you heard of Nantucket shorts? No, I haven't, Regis. Have you heard of Puerto Rico shorts? Not shorts, no. Bermuda shorts? I think so. Have you heard of Jamaica shorts? Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Now, what do you want to do here? Oh. It's only a $300 question. If you get it wrong, Randy wins the first game. Okay, here I go. I'm just going to wild guess, okay? Um, oh, God. C, Bermuda, final answer. Yeah, you got Woo! it, Bermuda Shorts. Way to go. You got it. Thank you. All right. Gina has one. Randy has nothing, but he hasn't had a chance to uh, put anything on the board. Are we doing it by dollars or by points? Like, do I have $300? No. Oh. No. Okay. It's points. Oh. Uh, I love doing Regis with the sound effects. So much more fun. Well, get an instant replay and we'll do sound effects. All right, but we don't have one here now. So um, she did 300 That right. means you have to go. Does, does that mean he has to go He has to go 500. higher. He has to go higher. You have to go 300 He has to match oh, you yes. or go higher. Randy? Maybe what we do is each round we do the same number of question. Like, I do a 300 now. Because she did it. Okay, that's And you fair. choose yep. what level question we do. Finally, an idea I can use. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, here we go. In basketball, what is the name for the area outside the three-point arc? In basketball, what is the name of the area outside the three-point arc? Do they call it Midtown, Uptown, Lowtown, or Downtown? I'm going to say... Downtown final answer. Are you sure about that? No, not at all, but I'm giving my final answer. <laughs> Basketball, the name for the area outside the three-point arc. Midtown, uptown, lowtown, downtown. Can I steal? And you you're saying it's? Downtown D, final answer. Randy? It's Midtown. <laughs> It is Midtown. You knew that, Gina. Yeah, I did. I did. Yep, you knew that. Well, I don't know any sports questions. We were at a hockey game a month ago, and I didn't know what center ice meant. I walked to center ice to do a tricycle race to announce thank you very much to the Kings game. And Randy said, where's Gina? And Tim said, center ice. And he said, oh, where do I find that? (laughs) Well, you see the ice, Babu? Find center. Uh, Yeah, Babu. Uh, You see the uh, goddamn, uh, you see the white stuff with the... uh, The steam coming off? The steam and the Zamboni and the red lines. Right in the middle, there's some blue (laughs) stuff there, man. It's the center ice, man. Get in there. Jesus Christ, man. All right, here we go. Round two of Millionaire. Now we're going to go to Randy to pick a question, try to pick up a point, because you're down one nothing to Gina Grad. Uh, 300 questions. You've got to go higher than 300. You have to go 500 or higher. Let's do a $2,000 oh, question. Well, now that really raises the stakes here because that means Gina then has to answer a $2,000 question. And we can't question. go back. There's no going back. No. Now we're at 2000 Right. Now we're at 2000 Oh, Lord. And I'm pulling these questions randomly. And the question goes to Randy Wang. What breed is the cartoon dog Snoopy? Oh. Beagle. Is Snoopy a boxer? A beagle? A basset hound? Or a bloodhound? I'm going to go B, final answer. Yeah, he's a beagle. You got it. Way to go. How great is it that I get a Charlie Brown I, question, It's so Gina. not fair. 
He's a Charlie Brown expert. So now Randy <laughs> asked two questions. He's got one point. Gina Grad, correct, with only one question, correct answer. So it's one to one. But Gina, you have the advantage. And now you get your $2,000 question. I'm ready, Regis. All right, sure. You got it. And remember, you have a 50-50 if you need it. Okay. Which Italian phrase refers to pasta, which is still firm to the bite? Uh, uh Is that al dente, al fresco, alberto, or albino? Oh, (laughs) you with the jokes, Regis. A, al dente, final answer. Yeah, it's al dente. You got it. You got it. Way how is go. how is a pasta question and Snoopy the same level of question? They're both pretty easy. Well, I I could I wouldn't know that pasta question. Yes, you would have. You know any food question? <laughs> I know any fast food question. I'd know the pasta question. All right, we go back now. Score two, best of five. Um, Randy has only one. Gina has two. Now you're going. If you get this, you win. Let's do this because that's three points. Yes. And the last question was a two thousand dollar question, meaning you. Uh, have to go higher. No, she could stay at 2000 or she no, has to go higher. Go, go higher. higher. You got to go higher, yeah. right? Is that how we play it last round? Sure. Who knows? <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, no, yeah. Rand- we went from $300 to $2,000 because right. Randy jumped in. But ahead. could Randy had selected a $300 question? No, no I could I select a $500. It had to be five or above. <clears throat> All right. So you have to go 4000 or higher. Remember, if you get this right, you win. Who wants to be a millionaire? You you want to play? Let's, Let's play. play. You got it. Sure. Here we go. All right. Can we do five thousand? We could if there were five thousand oh. dollars. After four thousand, eight thousand, eight thousand. Oh. Now he answered at two thousand. So your options are four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. Should we go for it? Let's go for it. Let's do thirty-two. Wow. See, she's playing strategically because she knows it puts Randy at a disadvantage because if she gets it wrong, it doesn't matter right. because uh, she's ahead with points. All right. Here we go. You ready to go? Let's play. For $32,000. You want to play? Let's, let's play. play. Regis usually yells, let's play before the contestant oh. has a chance to answer. <laughs> like <clears throat> the contestant, you hear let, let, you hear the beginning of the L. So try it again. Okay. You want to play who wants... You want to play? Let... No. You're ready to play who wants to be a billionaire. Let... Let's play. You got it. Here we go. <laughs> what is the U.S. equivalent oh, no. of Japan's Nikkei 225? What? Hong Kong's Hang Seng. <laughs> and London's FTSE. You're making this up. I don't know if what does it even ja- mean? Ja- is the Nikkei is it the two twenty five? I'll call it the two two five. I don't know what it is. What is that? We got. We, <laughs> I can't give you the answer. What is the U.S. equivalent of Japan's Nikkei two two five, Hong Kong's Hang Seng, and London's FTSE? Is the U.S. equivalent a the Dow Jones World Stock Index, b the New York Stock Exchange, c the Dow Jones Industrial Average? Or D, the Wall Street Journal. That is completely and totally unfair, Regis. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go with C, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, final answer. You want to make Dow Jones Industrial Average your final answer? You want to say C? Yes, Regis. I'm sorry, Gina. It's A. <laughs> the Dow Jones World Stock Index is oh. the U.S. equivalent of Japan's Nikkei, Hong Kong's Hang Seng, and London's FTSE. That was, that was some and for anybody for anybody wondering, these are actual questions from the Millionaire board game. So I have uh, to see what that even this. looks like to to look at. The answers the <laughs> answers on the other side of the card. No, I but I want to know what a Hong Kong hang sang. But looks you see like. where I'm getting the answers yeah. from, right? Okay. All right. Here's where it stands. Uh, this sucks. Excuse me. This game sucks. Oh, I thought you were talking about the show for a second. <laughs> it's the Brian Whitman podcast show at brianwhitman.com. At my, uh, 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 nice segue. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Oh, my okay, God, Brian. Oh, my God. Put, p- p- put me in the wheelchair. Right, get put, I, I told you where I was going. Put me in the wheelchair. Come on. 911. Put me. I'll hold. Put me in the wheelchair. Yeah, no problem. Right, I'll take up. your time. Put Don't me. swallow your tongue. Take your time. I'm sure there are other things going on. Put me in the wheelchair. Come 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 on. Put me in the
Come on. Hold on. Yeah, I'll hold. No, 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 no. Do what you got to do first. No, I don't want to drink that. Don't make me drink. Yeah, you can talk to your boss first. I, I can't. I can't drink. Gina, make sure Take they don't time. charge you. I can't yeah. feel my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to do. I'm not. We're not paying a fee. I can't feel my tongue. I no, can't. we'll wait in line if it means we don't have to pay the fee. I can't drink water. I can't feel my no, tongue. No, he's fine. He's fine. Uh, yeah. No, I know. Cats and trees are very scary. Go ahead. I think he's Take coming around. Brian. Oh, you know what? Can you hear us? Randy. I think he's okay. Randy, are you okay? Ryan, Ryan Wong, <laughs> Brian, Chi- the Chinaman, Brian, can you open your eyes? <laughs> Who I worked with for three He's years. He's cool. Okay. No, I, thank you. Your Thanks. eyes not drooping anymore, Brian. I Thanks think for your okay. time. Where's, fine. where's Jerry Gomez? Okay, where's Jerry Gomez? Where's Conway? They G- don't, they're not here. Gina? Hi. 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 No, that's Shauna Woolsey. How many of you? Hello? Can't get. Can't get. Hey, Woolsey. Can't get. Was it cool? By the way, I started Connecticut. I know, Brian. Was it? <laughs> How's that stroke working out for you? <laughs> with any luck, I'll when have are you going to go see somebody? With any luck, I'll have one within an hour. <laughs> uh, I am going to see somebody, a neurologist. Uh, Shauna. Hello? How did it work out when your boyfriend urinated on your clothing? Kick it. Did he do it in Connecticut? Kick it. Where's the, what's the last state in which he peed on your clothes? Kick it. Could you smell it? Kick it. You smelled Connecticut or you smelled the urine? Kick it. All right. Okay, so here we are playing millionaire. Uh, Gina lost a little bit of an advantage here. With a question that made no sense. She picked a $32,000 question. Randy Wang has no choice but to go 64000 or higher. And um, if you get it, you're all tied up. Uh-oh. All right, I'm going to go for a $128,000 <gasps> question. There's no such thing. <laughs> yeah, there is. No, it's a 125, I mean. Oh my god. All Close right, enough. sure. You want to play who wants to be a millionaire? Let's All play. right. No, oh. yeah. What do I say? Oh god. I say you want to play I say I yeah. say you want to play and you say I say you you want to play millionaire and you you go L- No. That yeah, I was going to yeah, say it right. But that's not how Regis did Let's it. Let's do it. I used, Ryan, to, we'll I used to do it on the Corolla show. We'll do it. All right, you ready to play? Let- Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? That's what I did. All right. You want to play who wants to be a millionaire? Let. No. Oh. All right. My, my mistake. All right, you ready to play? Yeah, Let's, Let's play, play who wants to be a millionaire. Oh. All right, for $125,000. In 1863, President Lincoln replaced Joseph Hooker. With which other general to lead the army or the Potomac? Should be of the Potomac. I think that's a typo. <laughs> Do you want another? That could no, be. A, oh, that's, okay. No, that's fine. In 1863, you don't know the answer. In 1863, like- <laughs> President Lincoln replaced Joseph Hooker. With which other general to lead the army or the Potomac? I think it should be of the Potomac. But and anyway, A, Stonewall Jackson. B, George Meade. C. Ambrose Burnside or D. Albert Johnson. So was Joseph Hooker replaced by Stonewall Jackson, George Meade, Ambrose Burnside or Albert Johnson? All right. Well, I know Stonewall Jackson was for the South, so it's not him. Could be Ambrose Burnside. What was the second one? George Meade. That doesn't sound right at all. B is George Meade. C, Ambrose Burnside. D, Albert Johnston. Uh, can I use a uh, lifeline here, 50-50? Sure, you got a computer, please. Take away two of the wrong answers, leaving Randy only one wrong answer. The- Too soon. Oh. Leaving only one wrong answer and the correct answer. Bing. All right. Is it George Meade or Albert Johnston? Well, the one I was hankling for didn't seem oh, to... Oh, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> he said hankling. Oh, we'll cover that when we have a dictionary. Okay. <laughs> Can't afford one right now. We right. need more subscriptions at brianwhitman.com. 1863, President Lincoln replaced Joseph Hooker with which other general to lead the army uh, or the Potomac? Of the Potomac. Albert Johnson doesn't sound like a general name. I'm George, go, somebody... George Meade or Albert Johnston? I'm going to go with George Meade. Final answer. Final answer, George Meade? That's my final answer, Regis. Would you believe he got it for $125,000? That sound doesn't exist on the show. Oh.
No, they do the... Uh, we are the all tied up. The next person to answer, I think, wins. Or no, no, because it's... Uh, Gina got two right and one wrong. Randy got two right and one wrong. So let's... Uh, you got to go 250. I want to go 250. Well, you have to, baby. Baby. Yeah. All right, so you're going 250? Yeah. Sure. Sure. You got it. Here we go for $250,000. Any questions that contain words I can't pronounce, I don't ask. Okay. Like Nikkei 257 Hot Hang Sang? <laughs> that should have been a do-over. Which of the following is a typical Greek food? Do you like Greek food? I love Greek food, Regis. A great. I lived in Greece for, for a while. All right, I don't care. Oh. Here we go. Which of the following is a typical Greek food? A, carbonade. Hmm. B, tara masalata. Oh. C, gnocchi. Mm. D, tapas. Can I hear those again, Regis? Sure, you got it. I think there might have been some pronunciation uh, issues. You want to think it through? You got it. Thank Which you. of the following is a typical Greek food? Carbonade. C-A-R-B-O-N-A-D-E. Tara Masalata, T A R A M A S A L A T A. Gnocchi, G N O C C H I. Or tapas, T A P A S. Which of the following is a typical Greek food? What do you want to say? Regis, I'm going to go with Tara Masalata, B, final answer. And why are you going with Tara Masalata? Because I know the other three are not. I know, the, I know gnocchi and tapas are not Greek. Gnocchi is Italian, tapas is Spanish. Um, carbonade sounds like something that's probably Italian, maybe a, you know, like a carbonara. And I know that basically for every one English syllable, there's about eight Greek syllables. All so right. Very, B. very long explanation. Oh. Didn't have time for it. You're going for Tarama Salata. Yes. Final answer. Gina. Hmm. You got it for Woo! a quarter million dollars. Woo! All right. Way to go. You're up now. Three right, only one wrong. Yay. Randy, you have two right. Yeah, and I want to go for $500,000. Wow. I think you had to. I think you had no choice. I could have gone for the million. If you get this wrong, I'm out. You can't win. But I still get the thirty-two grand, right? Because that's the benchmark? Sure, you got it. Here we go. For half a million dollars. You ready to play? Let's, Let's play who wants to be a millionaire. Or I think it's you want to play who wants to be a million. Let's, Let's play. play. No, play doesn't come twice. No. All right. It's been a long time. I used to do it on the Corolla show. I forgot. I don't have the. Uh, I haven't seen the show in a long time. All right. Here we go. If you get this wrong, Randy, you do lose because you will have uh, two wrong answers and it would be mathematically. Well, actually, we could have a tie if you got this wrong. Okay. I don't know that we have enough questions. Oh. Well, uh, my, the, the we, final question is a million dollars. I know the ge- – <laughs> thanks, Einstein. You know what? Thanks, um, Captain Avioso. Uh, Avioso, man. I tell you, man. <laughs> yeah, what would we do without the king of the game? What would we do without uh, uh, Dan Enright or Bill, wow. Bill Todman? <laughs> I, don't we just keep reading million-dollar questions? Thanks, so? Peter Marshall. There you go. That's thanks. a little inside. Thanks, Reed. Thanks, Richard Dawson. Oh. Thanks, Dick Clark. For five hundred thousand dollars, here we go. What shape is the star of Africa Diamond? What? <laughs> the star of Africa Diamond. What shape is it? Is it a pear? Pear shaped. Is it round? Is it Marquise? Or is it emerald shaped? Did I say Marquise right? Marquis. Marquis. M A R Q U I S. Why wouldn't it be e? a star? It's Marquis. Marquis, Marquis Diamond. Yeah. All right, the star of Africa diamond. It's a diamond. Is it pear-shaped? Is it round? Is it marquee-shaped or emerald-shaped? I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's pear-shaped. Shocking that Randy would pick the food shape. (laughs) I don't know what the other words are. And you want to go with pear and you want to make that your final answer? Yes. For $500,000. Or can I just take home my two hundred fifty? dollars Final? Final answer. $500,000? Yeah. You just got to... $500,000. Five hundred thousand dollars. I knew it. I Half knew a it. million. You knew the answer. I was mad. That That's right out of my ass. That. Yeah, 
Uh, Regis, can I just take something off you real quick? Yeah, what's on me? Uh, I mean, what's on me? An eyelash. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, Gina, you have to go for a million dollar question. All right. Let's do now, this. Now, actually, if you get the, see, you chose to start. Right. Which could come back to bite you in the A. Right. Because if you get this wrong, um, it's over, baby. I don't think you can come, oh, come no. back and win. All right. Here we go. Oh, I'm scared. I need saran wrap. <laughs> you might know this. <clears throat> for one million dollars. And you need it to survive or Randy wins the game. Okay. Which spice is featured on the flag of Granada? The Isle of Spices. What? I only saw the word spices and thought I didn't see Granada. Sorry. Thank you. Is it nutmeg? Oh, God. Synonym. Synonym. Excuse me? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, wait. Time out. Reach, what did you say about reading uh, questions you couldn't pronounce? I think I get a new question. No, I can pronounce cinnamon. Cinnamon. (laughs) Which spice is featured on the flag of Granada, the Isle of Spices? Antonym. Is it A, nutmeg? B, cinnamon? Sound it out. C, peppercorn? (laughs) Or D, mace? Mace. M-A-C-E sounds like mace to me. What is it, Ginigrad? Hmm. Which spice is featured on the flag of Granada, the Isle of Spices, nutmeg, cinnamon, peppercorn, or mace? Well, I don't think it's cinnamon because that would just look like two sticks. All right, sure. Uh, peppercorn is a little sort of spiky balls. I can see that on a flag. So you're eliminating cinna- cinnam- oh, cinnamon and peppercorn. No, I'm not saying I'm eliminating peppercorn. Does she still have a 50-50? She used it. No, I didn't. Randy used it. Thanks, I used Randy. mine. Oh, my God. He's so nice. Well, when you're heavy, you're nice to people. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, it is that. I would like to use my 50-50. All right, sure. <laughs> Computer, please take away two wrong answers, leaving Gina Grad only one wrong answer and the correct answer. All right. Which spice is featured on the flag of Granada, the Isle of Spices? Is it nutmeg or cinnamon? Ooh. My original... Hinkling was to go with nutmeg. Words inkling, baby. Oh, sorry. Um, and though I might really regret this, I just don't see cinnamon on a flag. So I'm going to go with a nutmeg. Final answer for a million dollars. For a million dollars, you're going with nutmeg. Yeah, you got a million dollars. Yeah. Wow, Gina, that was your fifth and final question. Awesome. Congratulations. You got four right and only one wrong. Thank you. Randy, this is your last question. You also have to take a million dollar question. I couldn't get a hundred? If you get it right, you will tie... Lightning uh, round. uh, Gina. You will tie Gina and uh, it'll go down as a tie. There will be no... Lightning round? I think lightning round would be a good way to go. All right, maybe lightning I round. I think it would be a real short lightning round. Just 100 to 500 questions, and you don't even no, give us multiple million. choice. Just million. Okay. All right. Okay. Or no, I just keep asking you really easy questions until one of you gets I okay, keep asking okay. $1,000 questions until one of you gets it wrong. Okay. All right. But that might not happen because uh, uh, Einstein might get this wrong and oh. you win. Randy, if you get it right, you tie. Your, this is your only chance. I'm to not s- getting this right. Your only ch- that's confidence you for you. Your only chance to stay in the game. All right, here we go. You might know this. You worked in printing. Oh, wait. It's a printing question? <laughs> this isn't fair. You get Snoopy and printing. You got a goddamn Greek question. That's true. Which punctuation mark is also the name for the currency of Costa Rica? <laughs> That's and not a printing question. I saw a punctuation mark <laughs> just like I saw spices on her question. I thought you meant printing like a printing press, not scripture. Which punctuation mark is also the name for the currency... Scripture? Well, scri- <laughs> Scripture is the Bible. No, script, I mean. you know, I love that he's sidetracking this with cursive. a semantics argument. Cursive, you mean. Calig- no, you said Calig- printing like when I used to work at a printing press. Well, it's not. You know, the question wasn't how, how long does it take to print a thousand uh, free strip club? How uh, many sheets in a ream? Yeah, what's the four colors yeah. spread? <laughs> Thank you for being here. Yeah, totally. Because I didn't have the line. Totally. You nailed it. Thank you. And thanks also. Linda Salvin came back. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi, Linda. I'll be with you in a second. I sec. don't mean to interrupt the game. No, I know. We have our reading. Our reading. Gina, I a, 
By have, the, excuse me for a second, Randy. I'm in the middle of a quick bit with the character. Linda, we have a reading scheduled for right after the show. So uh, yes, yes. So give me a couple more seconds. Randy's got to get this question wrong, then I'll be no with you. No problem. I will be outside your uh, estate chasing butterflies. Oh, Gina, all right. Did you only know the word ream from the office? When you chase them, do you release them? That's a really good question. When you catch them, do you release them? I wink back at them as uh, God winked at me, and I release them. All right. Go. All right, for a million dollars. And to tie the game, your only chance to stay in it, Randy Wang. Which punctuation mark is also the name for the currency of Costa Rica and El Salvador? (laughs) Is it A, the period, B, apostrophe, C, comma, D, you're a colon, D, colon, I'm sorry. (laughs) These are, that's currency down there? It's a punctuation mark, also the name for the currency of Costa Rica and El Salvador. Period, apostrophe, comma, or colon. I'm going to go with colon. You're going to say colon. Now, why why are you saying colon? Other than your obvious affection for the human colon. (laughs) Well, because colon's the only one of the Of the male type. (laughs) Colon's the only punctuation mark. Hey, Regis, don't be a homophobe, dude. Colon would be the only one that looks like a full punctuation point. You know, the comma is a little very small. The apostrophe is kind of small. He is thinking this through. This is good. I don't. Colon, know. you know, has got two dots. Oh. And would you just? I mean, because if you even if you're in Costa Rica and that's your currency, if you're just writing a little tiny speck, that's your. You know, it's got to be something significant. So the only thing minorly wow. significant out there is a colon. Huh. All right, you want to make colon your final answer? Yes, Regis. Final answer D. Colon. Randy Wang. You got a million dollars. Unbelievable. I can't believe that uh, Forrest Gump tied it up here. Four correct answers out of five for Randy. Four correct answers out of five for Gina. And in a way, he almost deserves a bonus point because I didn't even understand the question. I thought I thought you meant they call their currency a colon. Like, uh, that costs five colons. No, when Randy's not here, we call him a colon. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. All right, so how are we going to do the lightning round? Lightning round. round. Okay, I'm grabbing $1,000 questions. Shouldn't you? Okay. I was thinking maybe you just give us one from each of the money categories. Like, yeah, start at 100 and we just keep going, and yeah. we call out our names up, to get the up, answer. Up, 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 up. And we'll and, say, Randy or Gina. Oh, you shout out if you know the yeah. answer. Yeah, no multiple how about choice. Lightning round. Here's the lightning round, but I'm going to make it, okay, I'm going to make it harder than 100. Oh. I might make it, you know what, let me look at the question. You shout, I, Regis... All right, sure. I'm here wherever you need me. You want to play? Let's Let's play. Regis will read the question. You will shout in by calling out your name. Regis will determine. I will determine who buzzed in first. If you get it right, you have won. If you get it wrong, like on Weakest Link, (laughs) your opponent wins. I I think that's how they play. Do we? The Weakest Link. Do we have to wait until the full question's been read, or can we just shout out anything? You can buzz in at any time, but keep in mind, when you buzz in... Question stops. I stop reading, and you must be prepared to answer. Okay. All right, I think, I feel like it should be a three... Randy, don't try to cheat. I'm not looking at it. What do you think, Brian? I think it might be too easy. No. Who cares? It's a lightning round. It's you know what? Speed. You know what? All right. We already proved that we're smart enough to answer million-dollar questions. Yeah. Here we go. Regis, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You got it. Let's play. Sure. Absolutely. I love it when Regis would interview the contestant, the contestants, excuse me, and not care at all. Basically interview himself. Right, and not care. He'd be, he'd be like, um, all right, Gina, what do you do for a living? Well, I uh, work in radio. All right, and where do you live? I live in Los Angeles. And what do you want to do? Uh, what do you want to do uh, ultimately? Uh, I would like to uh, join the circus. All right, good for you, Randy. Where, yeah, do, you, where do you live? You know, he gave them no yeah. no attention. I live in Valley Village. Uh, Valley Village. All right, and uh, how old are you? I'm 23 years old. All right, did you go to school? Yes, I did. And what'd you study there? I studied high school. All right, good for you. <laughs> Let's play. Regis is going to ask the question. Shout in. Buzz in by shouting your name. If you get it right, you win in the lightning round. If you get it wrong, your opponent wins. So be sure to only buzz in when you're sure. If you think you know the effing answer, man. Let me quickly see the answer. 
Here we go, Regis. God, I wish we had the sound effects. All right. To type a simple letter, it's a printing question. Gina. Oh, hell. This isn't a printing question. <laughs> to type a simple letter. In El Salvador. <laughs> in America. Anywhere. I don't know where. I don't want to confuse anyone. Start over, please. To type a simple letter, a computer user would use a... Keyboard. No, you have to say your name. Randy. Rand- no, that's not fair because I told him he had to say his name. We need a new question. <laughs> you sure you want to make it not fair? No. Are you sure you want to disqualify Randy? It's up to you. Are you sure you want to... I'm dis- not sure. Let's keep going. I, I'm sure I don't want to disqualify Randy. Let's keep... No, you have to decide right now. No, I said it. I am sure I don't want to disqualify Randy. You're an idiot. Oh. No. You don't want to disqualify him? I want to disqualify him. <laughs> I'm trying to read your eyes, but I'm getting nothing. You have return. the right to disqualify Randy, eliminating him from the game. Right. And also, uh, his answer was keyboard. Uh, it ain't one of the four in front of me. So that's what I'm saying. I would like to not disqualify Randy. And let How come that I can never remember to count? answer my name? You want to let the question count? Brian. Oh, and let him get it wrong. Yes. Oh, but no, you could have disqualified him because he didn't follow the rules. Okay. It doesn't matter. Fine. Either right. way, it's going on. To type a simple letter, a computer user would use a... Randy. Randy. Keyboard. Moron. I just said it's not <laughs> one of the four answers, and you repeated the same goddamn answer. <laughs> not listening <laughs> of course you weren't listening my turn you don't need it you win he got it wrong <laughs> congratulations <laughs> gina grad wins in the lightning round gina do you remember by the way it's that one blind or leading the freaking blind by the way anyway it was spreadsheet browser word processor or food processor gina <laughs> yeah. word processor you got it. Thank you. There we go. Gina had it. She wins. What a, I want to commend both of you. A very close match. It went to the lightning round. Yeah. Gina Wang. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gina Grad wins by one point in the lightning round. That's impressive ass. I don't know why I can never remember to answer my name. One time we were doing a name that tune, me versus Gina on Kiss songs. And he and answered I, with my name. I went, Gina. Yeah. Wait a minute. You guys had the balls after I left the no, show. No, you were there. Oh, I thought you meant Kiss FM because no, I would have got all those the right. Band. All right, uh, we do. We're going to go over time a little bit here because we give our podcasters, our subscribers, we love you. We give you as much as we possibly uh, can, and we want you to tell your friends to join us and send me email. My email address is my name, email Whitman at gmail dot com. My Email address is my name, email Whitman at gmail.com. If you have a technical question, if you have a technical question, for example, I register, but I can't access the podcast. I register, but this, a problem with the PayPal, with the username, with the, but the, but the, anything technical, email Randy Wang. His email address is his name, Randy Wang to the number two at gmail.com. That's Randy Wang, the number two at gmail.com. If you want to get in touch with Gina Grad, go to ginagrad.com. Yes. And her email address is... Uh, can I do my... Okay. Do it every uh, one. Gina Grad at, uh, G- at uh, yahoo.com. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Conway told me after I left, you started doing like us. You started... You I picked tried. It, you picked it up and you were, do- you were yes. doing it. Yes. Yeah. Um, is the, and you this... do the laugh, too. You do the laugh, right? No, I don't do the laugh. Oh, no. Conway told me you do the laugh. Great. Uh, Randy does it pretty good. Randy does me doing Tom. Yeah, we all do you doing everybody. You don't have to. Let's all do it at once. What well, are we doing, the laugh? Well, well the laugh. wait a minute, guys. <laughs> there are many versions of the laugh. Can I just ask something really Do you want to do the really evil version? No, no, no. Just the fun one. Are we at Whitman Manor East? Yes. Thank you. Yay. All right, here we go. <clears throat> we'll all do the like us laugh at once. Okay. In three, and then we'll read emails and we'll leave. <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> Randy, that's the evil one. No. I said you want to do the evil one. Oh, I thought you meant now the we'll evil all, one. We'll I thought all. the evil one was when you do him with the raspy voice. Because no, that's evil. No, that's when I talk. We do his voice in the raspy voice is evil. That I'm an evil oh. person. Oh my god, I'm evil. I never thought of myself as evil until this moment. Let's all do the evil laugh. Three, two, one.
<laughs> now, of the two of you, do you know the explo- the explosive laugh, the big one that I, I love that. That was my closer to get Tim to really laugh where he cried. Can you can you do it? I, I I'm stepping out of it. I'll do it once and then you can do it. It's this. <laughs> Here we go. In three, <laughs> two, one. <laughs> 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 I let you turn into the, the Joker. Joker. The Joker, yeah, I haven't done that in a long time. I'd do it. All right, uh, <laughs> emails, so you can email me, and uh, here's a nice email. I should have taken you up on that Snapple. You can sit mine if you're <gasps> really? not. Really? Yeah, I trust you. Know, you won't leave with anything you didn't come in with, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so thank you. This is from Chris, one of our subscribers at the Brian Whitman Podcast Show. Brian, I'm sure you're getting a lot of fan email and fanfare over the last few days, due in part to return to Tim's show on his last night, talking about your new podcast show, and I hope this doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Well, Chris, your letter didn't get lost in the shuffle. (laughs) I just wanted to thank you for all the laughs and good times I've shared vicariously with you and Tim while you were on 97.1, I got to say that you two complimented each other and synergized the show into so much more than just a talk show. Mm. It was really more like an experience than a radio show. I'm excited to sign up today for your new podcasting show and hope that it goes well for you. My condolences on your recent losses. Things like that always make me think about my own loved ones and how we need to be more thankful today for what we have instead of wasting our lives, pining for more or about the future and neglecting what's most important right in front of us. But I guess that it's only natural. You are tremendously talented and have a lot going for you. I wish you all the best. Your new podcaster, Christopher. And Brian, can you please play Dream Lover by Mariah Carey and dedicated to Gina Grant? Christopher, I don't I won't say his last name in Seal Beach, California. Thank you. Woo! He's one of our podcasters. I thank him. And uh, I want to read two more and then we are at it. Ooh, I ha- ooh, know that I got to I got to pay off uh, one tease. Uh, at the very end of the show, you will hear the name of the first person to decline an invitation to be a guest on the Brian Whitman podcast show, and it's not Tom Likas. Oh, my God. A person declined an invitation to appear on the podcast show. It's not Likas. You'll find out that person's name at the very end of the show. I've got to know. Well, you just uh, you got to just listen, listen to listen the in. whole show. Oh. You got to listen to the whole show. All right, here we go. Uh, this is from, how would you say that? It's like an Indian name. I don't want to say it. Let's see. And don't, don't switch the con- the letters around because then it's offensive. No, it's, it's Sudeep. Sudeep? Yeah. What's his name again? Sudeep. Stupid. Sudeep. 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 Thank you for my email. My email address is my name, Sudeep, at blowmeupsudeep.com. <laughs> um, Mr. Likas, could you read this like Rick D's? Oh, you know it. Um, uh, that is uh, just wonderful. Dear Brian Whitman, you are the best, man. Commerce Casino, Tom Likas impressions. Your comedy is simply the best. <laughs> anyway, I look forward to the offer you have on the net, the podcast show. I really missed you for so long, and when I heard you on Tim Conway's final show, it was a breath of fresh air. You go, man. <laughs> All right. You always have to read the email as a as a, as a voice. No, like, I don't. That's There's so funny. Some of them I read like this one like is Louis? serious. I have to read by myself oh, okay. as myself, and I need your opinion as a female because okay. I have an opinion as a male. Okay. This comes from I'll. I'm not going to give the name. Okay. Uh, this comes from a podcaster. You know what? I'm going to call him. I'm not going to give his name. Okay. I'm not going. It's a it's a guy. I'm not going to give his name. Email Whitman at gmail dot com. First of all, Brian, let me say that I'm so glad you are starting this podcast show. Maybe now I can get through a workday without falling asleep, for F's sake. I live next door to a friend of mine who is currently in Iraq for the National Guard. He left like a year ago and will be coming back next month in March. As soon as he left for Iraq with the National Guard... 
his wife began cheating on him with many different guys. She didn't even try to hide it from me or their 12-year-old daughter. Oh, Lord. On one hand, I want to tell him when he returns next month. On the other hand, I don't want to get involved. Question. What would Whitman do? Oh, Lord. Good luck on the new show. Triple WD. What would Whitman do? That's a lot of responsibility. That right is there. a lot of responsibility. Because if you here, well, if your primary concern is the daughter, the 12-year-old daughter, you probably don't tell him because mm. it blows up the marriage. But she's in no biz. She, she, she's a terrible mother to do this. But you know what always ultimately happens in this situation? And you it, know what? She d- did nothing to hide it. Yeah. I think this dude should tell a man serving in the National Guard. Uh, you know, say, we, are, you know, we got a guy in the National Guard. He's in Iraq protecting our freedom. I believe if his wife's banging around, doing it all, going down on guys. <laughs> hitting chicks everywhere. I believe... That American hero has a right to know what's been going on. I think she has the right to do what she wants to do. Oh. Well, see, there's two differing, two very, very prominent men with different opinions. Well, if, if the I'm... guy's an American hero. I say he deserves to know what his whore, yes, his whore of a wife has been doing. And if I might do something that, that is completely counterintuitive to me politically and ethically, I'd like to agree with uh, former President uh, George W. Bush. Hey, look, well, I appreciate that. You know, so, you know, I love freedom. Yeah, I believe every, I, I, I believe all of God's children. Yeah, deserve to be free. Oh. You know, so you know, I, you know, so you know, so uh, you know, yeah. there are times I have a, uh, you know, so you know, uh, <laughs> I got a, you know, I got a tough time putting sentences together. Right. But Strate- I, strategy. But I believe that uh, those who put their lives on the line offer, offer the ultimate sacrifice. Deserve to be respected by those closest to them, mm. their family members and their spouses. And if she's out there banging around and jaying off some guy, <laughs> and if his wife is out there sing some D, if she's a if she's a sea C- sucker, C-sucker. she's a sea sucker. I say tell on the sea sucker. I say f the sea sucker. All right. Thank you, Mr. President, for coming by. So that's it. All I right. agree. I think ultimately the only thing the guy's going to be concerned with is why the F didn't my friends tell me. When he eventually finds exactly. out, that would be his only concern. And a lot of it has to do, I'm a patriotic dude. He's an American hero. Yes, he is. All right. Now you need to know, as we wrap up the Brian Whitman podcast show today at brianwhitman.com, you need to know the name of the person, the very first person to deny, decline, say no I will not be a guest on the Brian Whitman podcast show after I extended a very nice invitation. I will say this person's denial was very kind, very complimentary, offered very valid excuses for not appearing with me, but still was very clear. Good luck. I am not, quote, I have to pass on the podcast show. Can we guess? I will not come on. Who, it's not Tom Likas. Who do you think it is? Oh, oh. was it uh, uh, Rick Dees? Oh, well, no way. Rick will definitely do it. I'd love to do it. Rick will do it for okay. sure. It was not Rick Dees. Huh. Uh, do you want to take a guess? Well, I know who it is. You're an oh, idiot. God. You're supposed to just guess wrong and make it. Mm. No, it's, it's, it's all about truth. You're right. You know who it is. So. Well, no, have Gina guess. She has no idea you're talking about. She already about. guessed Rick Dees and it's have wrong. Have her guess again. It was Frosty. What? <laughs> Freaking kidding. And he lives right in my neighborhood. Frosty said, uh, Frosty, Heidi, uh, uh, Frank and Heidi and I have not even talked about options for the future. I'm uh, not doing any interviews or radio appearances at this time or anything. I love you, Brian. You're tremendously talented. He's such a sweet guy. I love I love Frosty. I totally love him. But I have to pass on the podcast. You know what? You know the only reason I'm glad that happened? First person ever to decline the invitation, Frosty. Make a note of that. That's Brian Whitman Podcast Show History. May I say that the the one reason I'm glad that he declined was because it got me to hear you do a Frosty Stillwell impression, which I've never heard, that was which not, is actually very good. No, that was just me doing a goofy voice. No, that but was, you had the right cadence. Okay, but don't count that as an impression because I was just doing a stupid oh, voice. Okay. All right, but thank you. Gina Grad, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here. Oh, and Linda, give me five minutes. We'll do the reading. Linda Salvin's here, the psychic. Is money. Uh, Brian, time is money. Yeah, but... <laughs> 
or she's chasing butterflies like a lunatic around my backyard. This is the Brian Whitman Podcast Show, available Monday through Friday for only $5. You get an entire month of shows. That's the cost of a cup of coffee at Starbucks, 25 cents a day. Tell your friends to subscribe at brianwhitman.com. Put it on your Facebook. Put it on your MySpace. Put it on your Twitter. Put it on your Twitter. Excuse put it, me? Put it on your woofer. <laughs> put it on your uh, effing forehead. Write it with a Sharpie on your mother effing forehead. BrianWhitman.com, the Brian Whitman Podcast Show, every day, Monday through Friday. We are here, and thank you for joining me from the bottom of my heart. I'm Brian Whitman. Randy Wang, as always, uh, with all the S I give you, you're the best. Thank you. Uh, Thanks a lot, Brian. Yep. Jeannie Graduno, I love you. and I love you, too. missed you so much for 10 months. Thank you. I love you very much. You're supposed to say you missed me for 10 oh, months. Oh, I, I care for you, too. You'll say you miss me for 10 months. I have great affection for you as well. It's brianwhitman.com. We'll see you tomorrow. Woo! We don't end the show with clapping. Randy, you didn't stop yet, right? I, st- I didn't stop yet. <laughs> it's the Brian Whitman Podcast Show. This, no clapping, is brianwhitman.com. <laughs>